Well, hey there, and welcome to Wedding Planning Simplified. This is the Blair Witch version. Please forgive me as I walk through our building. I am here at the Unmistakably You studio. We're at 538 Adelaide Street North, and I thought we would do something just a little bit different today. We are going to talk about DIY food and beverage. As you know, if you're a member of Wedding Planning Simplified, we have been going live every Sunday for all of eternity, uh, it's been a number of years now, with some kind of helpful wedding advice to help you navigate your plans with hopefully a minimum of stress. So uh, we're now broadcasting to both Wedding Planning Simplified and to our regular Unmistakably You Facebook page. So if you are watching us from either location, welcome. I hope you're enjoying this beautiful Sunday that we're having. And uh, I'm here at the studio because we are running our extremely exciting uh, Oh, notifications on my phone, sorry. We're running our extremely exciting Old East Wedding Market starting this Thursday. We are open Thursday and Friday from seven to 10 and Sunday from 10 to four right here at our studio building. So I thought I would just take you on a little walking tour, again, Blair Witch style, of our studio so that you can kind of see what the market is going to entail and how things are going to work. So I'm just headed outside to our front lot. So I'm in a parking lot. Yeah, there's my car, normal parking lot. Looks pretty boring right now, but let me tell you what's gonna happen next week. We are going to be setting up a DJ, Rob from Music Central is joining us and he's gonna be spinning some tunes and doing some music trivia for us on Friday night, which is our date night. So if you are at all competitive and you want to join us on Friday night, we'll be doing some trivia in the front lot. Prizes are guaranteed to the winner. And uh, we're gonna have a tent provided by Jenna and Scott from Redemption Tent Events, as well as, unfortunately, I think they're gonna to have to bring in some pads heaters because it's not looking like it's going to be quite this warm next next weekend thanks a lot mother nature but we're hoping that it's going to be beautiful and uh, even if it's not scott and jenna have us covered with some patio heaters we have chris from the pole house who is going to be doing a live aerial silks show all three days of the market which is just so gosh darn exciting i can't even believe how excited i am about this and uh so come down and check that out we also have incredible food provided by Chad of Field to Truck. We have a cash bar, which you can actually get your tickets for online to avoid the lineups. And that's being provided by Tin Roof Event Company. And we have our sponsors, Anderson Craft Ales, Crafty Elk, and Peely Island Winery who are providing the alcohol for that. They're all doing uh, cash bar, but also they're all doing free samples as well. So behind me here, there's a garage door, which is closed right now, but next weekend it will be open and you'll be able to go in there to meet Kurt and the great team from Collins Clothiers. They are going to be doing on-site suit and tux fittings. So you can bring in your wedding party, get that checked off your list, and then head right down the stairs. And that's where we've got our cave. The cave is a, uh, a gamer's dream. So there are uh, pool and shuffleboard tables down there. We've got Ryan from JS Ryan Company coming in to do free beard trims. We've got Seth from the Rural Juror Brewery Tour who is going to be doing free beer samples down there. Lots of fun things to check out if you're not really into walking through the rest of the market. You can hang out in the cave, you can come up into the front lot and enjoy some awesome food and drinks with your friends. Or if you want to check out some of our incredible vendors, we have over 45 unique, incredible, awesome, different, funky, fun vendors who are going to help you plan an incredible wedding and put on those finishing touches. So you're going to come through our main door here. We're at 538 Adelaide Street North. This is where you'll enter the building. You're gonna head right up the stairs and we go to Studio 112. Can't get in there today, 
but it's right at the top of the stairs here. We've got a number of vendors who are going to be stationed in there. They're going to be uh, giving you experiences and ideas and all kinds of wonderful options for your wedding. We have everything from favors to photography, to flowers, to cakes, to everything in between. So if you're looking to put the finishing touches on your wedding plans, definitely make sure you pop into the building. Now, this is a really cool building. It's a converted factory. My understanding is that originally it was a, um, a tobacco harvesting equipment manufacturer. It has been an electrician's shop at one point, and now it is called the factory for creative businesses. And um, so it's, it's really kind of cool. There are lots of different spaces and nooks and crannies and really unique vendors in here. So if we proceed past Studio 112, there are going to be more vendors up the stairs. We've got some live music here provided by Mike Pere. This is where you'll find the lovely ladies from Yada. So Yada is a lifestyle boutique that is located here in our building. We'll have some free hair trials going on in there. Get a, a little glam session. I definitely could use some of that help right now. With Meg Boswell, there's one of our photo ops in there. So don't hesitate to pop in and check out Yada. Then if you continue to walk down the hall, you're going to find our second floor landing. And that's where we'll have a couple of other vendors stationed. We're going to have some photo ops right now. Our photo op is uh, less than stellar. It's right now it's a it's a garbage can. But you know what? We're doing a massive cleanup in here on Thursday on uh, Wednesday night, and we're going to turn this into a beautiful photo op. We've got a couple more vendors up in this landing, and then watch for signage because the building is a little bit of a maze. We're going to walk down the hallway and we're going to go check out Creative Inspirations. Now, if you have never met Anita from Creative Inspirations Photography, she is a wonderfully talented, awesome photographer who has a heart of gold. And she has graciously offered to do micro photo shoots, so professional photography for you. You can bring your family bring your significant other, get a couple of little informal engagement photos maybe, or maybe it's time for a new family portrait. And Anita will take that photo for you. And uh, all you have to do is provide a donation to Ukraine Relief. So if you are interested in doing some good, getting some beautiful photos and checking out some awesome local businesses, pop by Creative Inspirations. She's right here. There will be lots of signage to direct you to Anita's studio. There will also be a refreshment station in there and a little lounge area so you can sit down and hang out, bring in your girlfriends and have a chat. Next, we're gonna head down the stairs. So like I said, the building is a little bit of a maze, but we've got lots of signage to direct you. We're gonna pop outside. What a beautiful day it is today. I certainly hope next weekend's forecast changes and things warm up. We're gonna head on over to our courtyard, which is just new. The landlord this year decided to add some aesthetics to the back of the building and, and it's in progress as it's still spring. None of the plantings have been done yet, but we do have this really cool gazebo that's behind me. And uh, we've got Mac and Chris from Intimate Backyard Events who are going to come in and set up an awesome intimate little lounge area. There's a refreshment station back here as well. So you can grab some water, grab a tea or coffee from the front of the building and enjoy Colin Gray music. He's going to be provide, uh, providing live music back here. We've got Marcus from Icebox in St. Thomas, who's going to be bringing in some ice cream and gelato that you can purchase. And we've got Schwartz and Truber Music Services who are bringing in some of their really fun backyard lawn games. So if you're feeling competitive, maybe you missed the trivia on Friday night, bring your friends back here, grab some ice cream, play some lawn games. It's a fun place to hang out with the kids as well. Then, once you're done that, if you are still on the hunt for a wedding dress, or perhaps you're looking for a beautiful celebration gown for a bridal shower, we are working with Erin and her wonderful team at Once Upon a Time Bridals in Strathroy, and they are going to be bringing in wedding dresses and gowns. Hey Rick, how's it going? <laughs> I'm good. Uh, they're going to be bringing in some gowns um, for celebrations on um, 
I just occurred to me that I can't be talking in here when I've got my other computer on. Uh, they're bringing in wedding gowns on Sunday. You can actually try on your gown right here. You can say yes to the dress and leave with that beautiful gown right from the market. Or on Friday and Thursday nights, they're bringing in celebration dresses. So if you're looking for, like I said, a beautiful dress for maybe a bridal shower, maybe your rehearsal, you can check that out. They'll have lots of beautiful accessories as well. And we've got Janice from Something Blue Denim Company if you're looking to accessorize a dress that you already have. And a lot of other vendors in our studio as well. So I'm going to pop in there. I have, as you know, I'm not the most tech savvy human on the planet. So I have my second computer set up in there. But if I walk in there talking with this one, it's all going to echo. And that's going to be bad because I didn't mute the other one. So... <laughs> Bear with me for a second. I'm going to sign off here and I will pop into the other computer momentarily so that we can talk about how to DIY your wedding food and beverage because that, I know, is what you're here to talk about today. Be right back. And through the magic of a computer and an iPhone, isn't technology great? Here I am. Um, so hello, thank you for sticking with me. If you are joining us, like I said, from our Wedding Planning Simplified group, thank you for being here to talk about DIY food and beverage. This is the fourth installment in our DIY um, series. We've been talking all month about how to do things yourself and hopefully maintain some sanity in the process. And if you are still joining us from our Unmistakably You Facebook group, please pop in and join Wedding Planning Simplified. We're here every Sunday at this time. So the idea of doing any element of your wedding yourself is attractive for a number of reasons. We find a lot of couples talking about the price of weddings. It's an unfortunate reality that weddings are a big business and they tend to be expensive. It's also unfortunate that this year we do have, as much as I hate the term, a wedding boom, which can be impacting prices. And we also have this crazy inflation that's been happening as a result of oil prices and shipping delays and things like that. And so the potential to DIY is becoming more and more attractive. And I can certainly understand why you would want to think about doing either all of or some element of your food or your bar yourself, because those are probably the two biggest expenditures of your wedding. We usually suggest that you'll probably spend anywhere between 35 to 50 percent of your budget on food and beverage and in some instances, even that's conservative, depending on where your priorities are. So it can be certainly very attractive to think about doing some element of one of those or both of those, those things yourself. So I don't want to give you a step-by-step -step guideline for how to make your own lasagna for your wedding. That's not why we're here today. I do, however, want to just talk about some of the overarching things that you'll want to think about, because I think sometimes when you start your wedding planning, you don't necessarily know what you're getting into. And that's natural. I mean, you've probably never planned a wedding before and you're not necessarily really thinking through how, how extremely busy you're going to be the week before and how stressed out you'll be and how many balls you will have in the air. Even if you do have a planner on board, there are still a lot of details that week before. So if you are planning on doing any of your food or your beverage yourself, you'll want to make sure that you give yourself ample time, like more time than you think you need, and bring in a good team, especially if you are making any part of the main entree that's being served. If you are doing all of the food yourself, you are certainly going to need a team of people to help you. And you'll need to think about things like, can you make things ahead, freeze them and reheat them? Or does it need to be made fresh the, the day before? If that's the case, you need to think about how it's being heated and what facilities your venue has. Depending on your meal choices, there are a million different ways that could go. So again, I'm not going to be super specific, but do think about things like how you're going to keep your food refrigerated. Food safety is an incredible, an incredibly important element of all of this. 
because you certainly don't want to be the wedding that gave everyone food poisoning. So think about whether there's refrigeration on site. Think about how you're going to ensure that the food is cooked to the proper temperature and how it's served and held at a proper temperature. How are you going to transport that food to the wedding? You don't want to be working on your wedding day. So maybe you're putting somebody else in charge. Maybe you've got aunts and uncles who've spearheaded this for you. I remember when I was a kid, uh, it was it was a, a challenging time to begin with because my parents were actually in the process of separating. And my mom's sister had enlisted my mom and dad and a couple of their friends to make all of her wedding food. They were making schnitzel and... I think there were probably some kind of potatoes and some other stuff, but they did the entire wedding meal and they were all in a kitchen together preparing this food the day before the wedding. And it was so stressful. You could cut the tension with a knife for a lot of personal reasons, but also because they had this massive amount of food to prepare. And I had uh, been taken into town to go to my swimming lesson and dropped off and they were so stressed out and so busy that they forgot to pick me up. So <laughs> I walked three miles home that day because nobody came to pick me up. It was a lot of work. It was really stressful. And you just want to keep that in mind. Think about the the ask. What are you asking your friends and family to do? And do you feel comfortable putting that on them when maybe you would prefer to have them actually enjoying the celebration with you? If there are people bringing things in, we've talked refrigeration, we've talked about heating and, and reheating items, but don't forget about ice as well. If you're doing your own bar, that's something that you can't necessarily buy in large quantity the day before and store and then just take unless you have multiple, multiple coolers. So you need to think about the vehicles that these people are driving and whether they have physical space. You also want to think about your emotions during this time. It's going to be a very busy week. You're going to be excited. You're going to be looking forward to the day. You're going to have a lot of people around you who, whose emotions are also running high. So just take that into consideration before you really commit to doing any or all of your food or beverage preparation the week of the wedding. Now, when it comes to setting up the food or beverage, you need to think about who's going to do that because again, it's not going to be you. You need to think about who's going to replenish. So if you have um, water pitchers on your table, who's going to replenish those? If you run out of ice at the bar, who's gonna go run out and get more ice? If you run out of a tray of beef at the dinner buffet, who's going to replenish that? You need to think about having adequate plates and service vessels and service utensils, things like tongs and scoops and spoons. You need to think about barware. So if you're DIYing your bar, and we've done videos about this in the past, there are hard supplies that you need to bring in, like an ice bucket and tongs and bar cloths and knives and, and uh, cutting boards and corkscrews and jiggers and pour spouts and all of these things that you are going to have to make sure you're responsible for. So think through the service element as well. Don't just get to the food and then forget about the practicalities of how it actually gets on the table. Another practicality to keep in mind is who's actually going to clear tables and clean up. This is something that we run into as well with food trucks. Don't get me wrong. I love food trucks at weddings. They're unique. They're fun. Usually the food is a little bit more customizable to your tastes, but oftentimes that food truck doesn't come with servers and it doesn't come with anyone to bust the tables. So if you're DIYing your food, you have to think along those same lines as to who's going to clear your tables. Are you going to ask your guests to do that themselves? Does that mean that you have to have a big, ugly garbage and recycle bin right out in the open in your reception space? Who's going to deal with that garbage when those bags get full? Who's going to take the empties from your bar? So if you are doing any element of a DIY bar, even if you're stocking a canoe with ice and it's completely self-serve, what happens with the empties? You don't want to have empties literally just strewn around everywhere. So you need to think about who's going to collect those, pack them up, and who's going to take them at the end of the night. I would strongly suggest that a lot of these things can be dealt with by non-guest servers. So if you have a crew of people who are not family and not guests at your wedding, maybe this is the time to tap into them and maybe you can hire them for 
volunteer hours. Perhaps if they're high school students, they need volunteer hours. Perhaps you can pay them a minimal amount to come in and help out for the key times in the wedding. Maybe they just come in for a couple of hours, they set out the food, they clear the tables, they clean up the food, and then they leave. So I have a, a couple right now who are doing something similar. Their caterer is not providing servers. So the groom is actually a basketball coach and a bunch of his players are going to come in and they're going to perform this function. And it's a really affordable way to make sure that you have some people to do this who aren't your guests. But you do need to think about who's going to manage that team, who's going to be in charge of telling them what to do. You can't just have a bunch of high school kids, for instance, come in and expect that they're going to take initiative and know what to do. So you're going to make sure that it's, it's really clearly planned out and thoughtfully planned out beforehand. Now, I alluded a little bit earlier to some food safety risks, but all joking aside, you, you do need to be very conscious of this. Um, if you are preparing meat particularly, you need to make sure that it's cooked to a safe internal temperature. You need to make sure that it's held at either a safe cold holding zone or a safe hot holding zone. So it needs to be under four degrees or over 60 degrees so that it doesn't grow bacteria and make all of your guests sick. Um, if you're having food delivered, there are some services and caterers um, who will bring in trays of pasta or trays of meats. King of the Pigs, for instance, is one. It's a really affordable way to do things, but that food is going to come in in tin serving dishes and you need to make sure that it's served when it's hot and then it's not left out for an extended amount of time so that it cools down and starts to potentially become a danger to your guests. You need to think about what's going to happen if that food or drink runs out. Is there somebody assigned to go get more vodka if the vodka runs out? What happens if you underestimated and there's just not enough food for your guests? So if you are thinking about running your own bar or doing your own food, make sure you have a solid method of calculating how much beer to buy how much white wine, how much red wine, how much mix to buy. We have calculators for that. So if you're doing your own bar, contact me. I'll send you, send you our calculators. If you're doing food, I do far less with catering, so I'm not a great advice giver there, but you need to make sure that you have at least half a pound of meat per person, for instance. So make sure that you have a really solid professional opinion on how much to, to make and that you have someone in charge of running out to grab something if it's an absolute necessity and it's run, run out. What if you are out of ice? Who's going to go get that? Think about that. Uh, you also need to think about if you're having your food delivered. So if you have it from somewhere like King of the Pigs, for instance, where they're dropping it off, when is that food coming in? You have to make sure that those people are not driving down your laneway as you're having your ceremony on the front lawn if you're doing a wedding on private property. You need to make sure you know who greets the servers as they're coming in. You need to know if the people delivering the food will bring it from the driveway into your tent or into your barn, or if you have to have people to carry it that far. You'll need to be cognizant of who pays. So if you at all can, I would advise you to prepay, even if you're having pizza delivered, try to prepay and ask if you can also prepay the tip so that in the shuffle, that doesn't get overlooked because there are often a lot of things going on and you want to make sure that you have that covered and that you don't get angry phone calls from pizza companies in the middle of the night when you're just trying to dance. Um, so ultimately, I'm going to suggest to you that as scary as I'm making it sound, it is certainly very possible to DIY your food and your drink or some element thereof. It is possible, but you need to be incredibly organized. So make sure that you have the resources in place long before the wedding to calculate how much food and how much drink you need. With regard to running your own bar, especially, there are often licenses and permits that you need to think about as well, special occasion permits, if depending on your venue. I would always recommend if you're providing the alcohol that you have an additional alcohol liability policy. So make sure you know about that. 
Make sure that you have solid people who are in charge and make sure that they have no question at all about their marching orders. So what that means is that you are going to have to lay all of this out, make lists, make charts, make graphs, make whatever you need to make, but then sit down a week or two before the wedding with the person or people who are in charge of the food or who are in charge of the drinks and just make sure they know every single detail. Where is the food going to be located? Where are the utensils going to be located? Where is the table that it's going? Who's responsible for clearing those tables? Who's responsible for scraping and rinsing the china if you're using china? Where are the baskets for the china going to be stored? Where are they going to get locked up after the event is over? Um, who's going to empty the garbages? Who's going to bring the extra ice? Where's the extra ice located? Where is the beer being stored? All of these details are really, really important. And you don't want anybody asking you on your wedding day. You want to have a drink in your hand and you want that drink to be cold. And you don't want to be wondering why it's not cold because the ice never showed up or the ice ran out and nobody took the initiative to go get more. So being as proactive and as, as thorough as you possibly can in advance is going to really be important. So I am more than happy if you are thinking about doing your own food or drink to sit down with you. We can book a consult. We can talk through all of this and we can give you a really solid plan to make it successful so that you are not a complete stress case on your wedding day because there are a lot of things going on that day and worrying about whether your chicken breasts are cooked or worrying about whether there's enough white wine at the bar shouldn't be one of them. So please don't hesitate to reach out if there's anything at all I can do. Thank you so much for watching. If you're catching us on the replay, welcome. If you're in Wedding Planning Simplified, that's awesome. If you're catching us on Unmistakably You, join Wedding Planning Simplified. That's where, uh, where all the insider information is. And regardless where you're watching, buy your ticket to the Old East Wedding Market. They are on sale online. It's www.oldeastweddingmarket.com. We would love to see you there. Thursday night is opening. We're open from 7 to 10 at 538 Adelaide Street North. And Friday night is date night. So bring that special someone. Come out and play some trivia and enjoy some free food and free beer. And then Sunday, we are here all day from 10 until 4. Lots of great things going on. It is definitely not your traditional wedding show. It's very experiential and fun and different. And we just want to kind of put a different lens on planning your wedding. It's been a long couple of years of things not being really normal and we would love to have some time to celebrate and have fun and enjoy with you. So buy those tickets www.oldeastweddingmarket.com and I will catch you here next Sunday. Uh, I will be live from the market so I'm going to pop in and say hi and show you some of the cool things that are going on. Uh, you might get to enjoy some of those aerial silk performances or uh, live vicariously through somebody enjoying some delicious food and drink uh, but hopefully I'm seeing you in person next Sunday. Take care. Bye-bye.